War. It just never changes, does it? And when it comes to the Fallout series, that doesn't either. Okay, maybe the first two look completely different to the new one, but what I'm really getting at here is that Fallout 4 is very similar to the third game we saw back in 2008, and New Vegas in 2010. But honestly, that's not a bad thing, not in the slightest. In fact, Fallout 4 feels like an upgraded, more well-rounded, and slightly more polished step up from the past titles we bashed for hours on end. Straight from the start, you'll get to create your own character, reconstructing their face to make them look as heroic or goofy as you want, apply some basic attributes, and get the hang of the controls by wandering around your pad. You'll notice that it's 2077. The bombs haven't dropped yet, and everything's hunky-dory. But it doesn't take long until shit hits the fan, and you're left dashing off to Vault 111, that conveniently happens to be at the bottom of your street. Fancy that. After singeing your eyebrows off in an atomic blast, and probably crapping your pants at how much of a close call you just experienced, you're then sent off into the vault to become frozen in a cryogenic sleep chamber, where you'll slumber for around about 200 years or so. As it turns out, nasty people have shot your dearly beloved and taken Sean, your son, whilst you were trapped inside the pod, and you'll only be able to emerge again in the year 2287. And that's basically where you'll set off on your perilous adventure to survive in the barren, hostile place you used to call home. Learn about and adapt to your surroundings, but ultimately, find your son and take revenge on whoever took him and your partner's life. Of course, there's a hell of a lot more than just that for the story, as you'll meet new characters, opening up new expanding storylines as you progress. But the overlying base of the story has probably got more in common with Finding Nemo than your typical post-apocalyptic game. Though I guess it's similar to the whole where the hell did dad wander off to storyline from Fallout 3. Though unfortunate for Sean, you're going to get so goddamn sidetracked by all the glorious abandoned and not so abandoned locations that your son and the main storyline will just have to be patient. One of the best things about Fallout 4 is that it always keeps you guessing, as you never really know what's around the corner. One minute you'll be risking your life helping out randomers to take out raiders who keep robbing their stuff, the next minute you'll be helping wasteland forces like the Brotherhood of Steel fend off feral ghouls, which are basically ugly deformed and highly radiated people that like to slap you a lot. Now, Fallout 4 isn't exactly a casual gamer's paradise. By this, I mean that if you're not into the whole RPG concepts like looting, salvaging, XP systems and non-linear quests, then you might find the Wasteland to be a bit harsher than you probably initially expected it to be. Enemies can be brutal in the game, especially when you're at a low level, and pretty much everything in the Wasteland wants to either eat you, kill you, or bash you over the head. And stumbling into a new, interesting looking location like a curious cat might just be the worst decision you've ever made. Higher level baddies can unexpectedly pop out of nowhere and cut you down like a lamb to the slaughter. Managing your health and radiation levels as you play the game adds more danger to your journey, as you can't just simply walk wherever you want. And even if your health is really low, and that pool of water looks extremely thirst quenching, drinking it will probably just bug you up even further, as it will give you radiation poisoning. You'll need to take rads into consideration. Too many rads will make it harder to survive, as it lowers your maximum health, and because health can be hard to get as it is, Radiation really isn't your best friend. You'll spend chunks of time rooting through cupboards, deciding whether you really need that extra packet of glue, hoarded scraps, and collecting countless things from weapons, armour, medical supplies, drugs, random useless crap, and so on. And you'll be able to carry all of these things around in your pocket, that just so happens to be the TARDIS. Fallout 4 is one of those games that can be both beautiful and a little bit shitty in the graphics department. Some locations and sites in the game look glorious with all the top-notch lighting and graphic shaders really bringing out the best of a post-apocalyptic atmosphere. But at the same time, some of the textures are a bit off, not to mention that the human characters look a little bit like plastic dolls at times. The overall animations could be a bit smoother, especially when it looks as though an enemy is doing some sort of sidestep robotic dance mid-gunfight, which can make them harder to shoot. Well, without the assisted shooting that system, of course. But overall, these sorts of things don't really distract you from the experience too much. You break immersion a tiny bit sometimes, but as long as they don't destroy the fun, it's not that much of a big deal. Though unfortunately in true Bethesda fashion, the game is loaded with bugs. Quite a lot of bugs. And I'm not just talking about the rad roaches. Giant roaches. Sometimes an enemy will decide to get themselves stuck in walls and objects like some kind of immersion trolling ghost. And other times you'll be having a nice little chat with a fellow wastelander, only to have their speech boxes not appear. Leaving you both stood there, staring at each other, in awkward silence. Though encountering glitches isn't really as common as in some of the past games, and most of the time you'll just breeze by without them even bothering you too much. 
Now, if you're getting a bit lonely trekking the wasteland on your Todd, you don't have to worry, as you can have companions follow you around like trusty sidekicks along the way. Always wanted a pet dog, but can't be asked taking it for walks? Fear not, because you'll find dog meat early on in the game, and he'll help you out on your quest. Not only can he take out bad guys for you, but he's practically made of titanium. He won't die, and he'll just soak up those bullets like a fluffy sponge. It might not be realistic, but at least you'll always have some backup. Well, until you tell him to stay, and completely forget where he is, of course. Though if you fancy getting those creative juices flowing, you'll be glad to know that weapons can be upgraded, objects can be made from components, and you can even get all arty farty and build your own swanky base from littered junk, and live like a wasteland king. Though if you're not a crafty person, none of this is key, and you can simply go about your own business playing how you want to play. Fallout 4 will have you saying things out loud like, Oh look at that two-headed deer. Why is this fly so consistent on killing me? And where the fuck did that mine come from? But is the game worth it you might be asking? Well if you've ever played one of Bethesda's Fallout games before, or one of the Elder Scrolls games like Skyrim, then you kinda know what to expect already. It's a vast open world filled to the brim with violent goodness. Though the action isn't exactly full on, amped up to 11 like in other FPS games, you won't be racing your way through rooms blasting away foes like there's no tomorrow, as you'll just end up seeing that slow-mo death animation once again, probably with your head exploding too, just to rub it in. Fallout 4's action is a lot slower than other games, and taking out one enemy at a time is the way to play, looting corpses and the environment for valuables after every encounter, and seeking out those ever so useful stim packs which are quite literally a lifesaver. So it's all down to whether you're into RPG games, and whether you have enough time to invest in the behemoth that is Fallout 4. There's a ton of content here, but if you don't have the time to take advantage of it, you probably won't even scratch the surface of just how great the game is. But fans of the franchise will be pleased to know that Fallout 4 is probably as good as everyone expected it to be, and it feels like a greater version of what we've already seen before. Maybe not a complete evolution, but enough to give us that much needed, time consuming sandbox exploring adventure that most of us have been waiting for for god knows how long. So crack open a bottle of Nuka Cola, chow down on some tasty fresh iguana bits, and make sure you put your phone on silent because Fallout 4 has hit the shelves and he's taken over the world like a radioactive pandemic. Prepare to put all your social activities on hold as you turn down family events and hope that your girlfriend doesn't leave you, or while you discover every last nook and cranny of the ruins of a foobar Boston. So I hope you enjoyed this review, slap that like button if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to see loads more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.